Welcome back to 10 Foot Customs, and I am driving out this morning to get a couple things before I start working on my transfer case. It is exactly, what, Tuesday, I, I clear-coated Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, it is now Sunday. It is five days after putting clear-coat down, and for those of you who may have thought I was being a little overdramatic about getting all this work, all that paint work done on last weekend, this is what it looks like today. So it's hard to see through the screen, but that is snow and uh, it's 34 degrees, uh, 33 degrees out right now. I think that's it for our fall. I think we are now pretty much into going to be slushy, gross weather from now on. So yeah, I will now be pretty much confined to working in the garage. Uh, hopefully I get my block back soon, which is great because I can, I can rebuild my engine in the garage. But uh, today I am going to be doing the final assembly on my transfer case. And um, I can then mate my transfer case back to my transmission. And those two pieces can be ready to go for when the block does show up. I can put all this together and it'll be great. I'm in the garage and I am getting ready to assemble my transfer case. Before I get going, I do want to thank again JB Custom Fab for um, sponsoring this video and supplying me with uh, two brand new stainless steel shift rails. Um, I have a, another video I did a while back, a little more in depth on these. Uh, but this was one of the reasons why the, the transfer case has been, a, been apart for so long was my factory rails were all pitted where the seals sit and I was trying to figure out ways to solve that problem and JB Custom Fab has a solution to that problem. You just get their new stainless steel rails, that's it. They won't rust and they are the identical rails, so this is awesome. And I will say this again, I said this before. I do not know much about this transfer case as far as assembly of it. Um, I've watched a bunch of videos and um, I think the one I've been watching is called the Gearbox Video and that's, that's the YouTube channel, it's called Gearbox Video and that guy is super knowledgeable um, and that's who I would recommend if you're going to do the teardown and everything. This was not a rebuild for damaged. I mean, I, I've been looking things over as I've been going through it, making sure nothing looks damaged. Everything looks in pretty good shape. All the teeth are good. Um, the shift shoes have a little bit of wear on them, so I just flipped them over. They're only worn on one side, so I figure flipping them over should give me more wear on the opposite side. The reason why I did do it, because it was leaking, all the seals were leaking really bad. So that's really, I'm, I'm not doing a mechanical rebuild, I'm just doing a a seal repair and making sure it's all sealed back up again. So I am going to try to get these uh, rails back in here and hopefully that doesn't go too too bad. I'm not 100% sure what kind of grease I'm supposed to use. I saw a couple different kinds of grease to use. I don't know if I have proper grease, but I don't think assembly grease is going to hurt. So I got a little, I got a gasket set here that comes with the input and output output uh, seal, comes with the shift rail seals, comes with the pan gasket, comes with the gasket for that cover and where the shift rails go through, and I am 99% sure this is the new seal for the idler gear here. There's a big, solid rod that goes through here. And I'm pretty sure this is the, the O-ring for that, so. This is Primatex 
anaerobic sealant. If you're unf unfamiliar with anaerobic sealant, my understanding is anaerobic means that it hardens in absence of air. I've been watching two different, well, a couple different videos, on it, but two main guys who've done the rebuilds on this and who, who seem to know a lot of what they are doing. They, they vary slightly, but the one guy was using anaerobic sealant on his seals before he put them in. So I figured it can't hurt, I'm gonna do the same thing. He was just putting a little bit on the outsides of them. Because this paint is supposed to be a seal. And you were saying not much, you just want to wipe it on there a real thin, real thin amount. Let me grease in here too. I try not to mix the two. If you can get grease on the back side of your seals, it'll help retain the little spring that squeezes the, the seal uh, around your part. It'll help retain that uh, so it doesn't pop out on you. In. I did not get grease. Come on. Now you want to go in. And it's flush. It's also a thread locker, so I mean, if you get this on the threads of your uh, bolts that goes into a passage, it'll help seal those up too, from what I understand. Because again, anaerobic would seal in the threads where air doesn't get. Very sticky stuff. There we go. Seated. It's spring. There's a cap for this one, and wait, how does this go? Yeah, there's a there's a cap that caps this this hole off, and then the four-wheel drive sensor goes into that one. So yeah, the spring and the ball are the exact same size, though though they don't fit. They don't fit the same. They, one of the holes that they go into is deeper, and one of them is shallower. A little bit of lubrication on that. We use this to try to, we have to use a, a punch or something to hold the ball into place and keep the pills from moving up. Lubricate the spray up a little bit. Okay, let's 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 do this thing. Ball bearing. I need to push down on really hard. That seems extremely hard. I'm gonna launch something. Oh my! That that's that's. No wonder they tell you when to take these things out that you should put a um, a drumstick in. Now allow those things to come out. And I was like, "Pasha, I got this. I might not have this. Okay. Come on this side. What I need you to do, there's no grease on the very end of this. Mm -hmm. If you want to use a paper towel to hold it, that's fine too. There's a ball bearing you can see in here. You look down this shaft. Mm -hmm. I'm going to push that down as hard as I can because it's sitting on a spring. Mm -hmm. And then while I'm doing that, hopefully you can push the shaft on top of it. Okay, try pushing. I can't push hard enough to crush that thing. 
I need something bigger than this. This is just killing my hand. Well, what we were trying wasn't working. And I didn't want to do any damage to the threads or anything. The trick to doing this when you normally take them apart is to put um, drumsticks. I think I said that. I don't remember I didn't. But drumsticks fit at the same diameter as these. You slide a drumstick in, pull the shaft out, clean the shaft up, replace the shaft over, put it back in, and pull the drumstick out at the same time. I don't have drumsticks, and at the time, I was like, it can't be that difficult to put these things back in. It's not that easy. So, what I did, hopefully it works, I took one of my old shift rails. They are bad, they're, they're, they're not salvageable. And I just cut it into a wedge. I'm going to try to put this in there, push the ball bearing down. I can then rotate it to a full size section of it. I can rotate it over and push the other shaft back in. Let's see if that works. First, we're going to remove that one, get it out of the way. I think, I think it started. Okay, I think I am past my taper. Oh, definitely past my taper. Rotate that around so I'm off the taper. Oh, I see right there. I'm definitely off the taper. I'm almost into my seal. I don't want to be into my seal at all. That'd be bad. Take my good shift rail. And hopefully, oh, I'm gonna tap it gently, just gently. in. Not all the way yet, but now the detents face down, but from what I understand, to get them out, you have to rotate them anyway. Now my pill, my one pill is out of the way. Okay, the other pills are now out of the way. And then this one, it's already like half down. So this one, this one compresses really easily. So I'm hoping this one goes right in. Now this should just slide straight in, like this. I'm already hitting the bearing. Okay, that one just goes right in. That one's nice. Right there. Now what? Hitting something? I don't know. Too far. Oop. Gotta rotate it. So this one now needs to be rotated down. You should be in a shift point somewhere around here. Right, so this one needs to be rotated first. I don't remember. See? This is where things get complicated. This is where I had a problem getting it apart and I couldn't figure out the combination. It's supposedly so easy to do this. This is this is one of two things that I was fearing doing putting back together. This part and then all the little needle bearings in the idler. And this is exactly why, because this is now stuck. And I don't know how to get it back up again know where we are anymore as far as shift point out finger okay so that one's there that one's correct still Is that a long way to go no i can still turn that one okay well now i can turn this one now that one's in that's got to be wrong not 100 percent sure what happened there but somehow it all went back together both of the rails are in and they're lined up properly and that's awesome so I can now put a gasket on the side and slide this whole mechanism back in. I do have to remember 
to put this race back in. Okay, that one really, now it falls right back out again. So that is actually how it should be, that's how it was when I took it apart. It went very easily. Okay, so this then sits into its little cubby right there. I don't know if I can do this or not. This thing is extremely heavy. Like, like heavier than you'd think it is as heavy. Well, let's see. I don't know. I don't know the best way to do this. Uh, maybe like that. Maybe like that. Well, that was one of the hardest parts I was concerned about. That's done, so that's fantastic. I'm happy about that. Now let's put that piece in. It's a gasket. We're going to use this anaerobic sealant, real light coating of this anaerobic sealant. And again, the nice thing about this anaerobic stuff is that you can put it on the threads of your bolts too, because these bolts do go into the case, so it'll keep the bolts from leaking. Here's our gasket. Don't forget, while you're putting this thing in here, to put your shift forks on. Because it would suck to get these things all the way in there. Well, that doesn't fit very well with that gasket. There we go. And do not have your shift forks on. Flip it over. See, I'm already too far to get my shift forks on. This one. One shift fork on ish. Long shift fork has to go in before you even get this thing in here. Probably even better to have the short shift fork out. Put in long shift fork. Can't go too far. a freaking puzzle. That doesn't work. And then this one goes in. And shift some in the middle. Both shift forks are in. There, there. And we're starting. Shift rails are back in. I still need to hook up the actual rails with. You need to come forward. You need to come forward. Okay. There we go. Now we slide nice, and then you should come all the way up into there. Perfect. Shift rails. Shift forks are in. I still can't still have to fasten the shift forks, so they're just sitting there. I got my set screws, I put those in. And then I can put my idler shaft in. And for the most part, this is back together. I was starting to edit down the uh, footage of putting together the transfer case. Um, and somehow, half my uh, clips decided that they, that they were going to get corrupted and I now don't have the total assembly of the transfer case. So I can show you it assembled and I th the parts that I think uh, you missed. So this is the completed transfer case. And this is the part that I didn't get on here, I was putting in the idler gear on this big pin, which actually went way easier than I thought. All the rollers went in just fine. It, it wasn't a big deal. So it is done. Those are the shift rails that are new. And it does shift really well now. So I will get the output yokes powder coated. Actually, that's, that's an input. Output yolks powder coated, one on each side, and 
then they will be installed and the transfer case will be done. I want to again thank JB Custom Fab who sponsored this video. Uh, without him supplying me the shift rails, um, I'm not quite sure where I would have been. I probably just would have reused the old rails and you know, it would have leaked on the new seals. So um, I thank John a lot for supplying them and to supplying them for everybody who needs them. And um, hopefully next time um, you see the transfer case, it'll be being mated to the um, transmission. And I will hopefully have my block back very soon and I'll be able to install all of it and have a almost complete rolling chassis. Thank you all for watching. Uh, remember to like and subscribe. And uh, I hope everybody has a great week.